Good morning, my creative friends. I am Dr. Manette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs with Manette, where I go live every Monday to Thursday morning at about 7 a.m. Mountain Time. And uh, I'm running a little bit behind this morning. My daughter, my husband drove my daughter to the airport at 4. Of course, I got up to say goodbye and then fell back asleep. And uh, <clears throat> decided I need to have a shower for my busy day ahead. But there's something about showering and then just putting my or putting clean pajamas right back on that makes me super happy. So here we are for another episode of painting in your PJs with Manette. And in the month of January. We are talking about archetypal images, patterns, and symbols that guide us in our lives. Cleaning up my table here a little bit. And archetypal patterns or symbols are often unconscious but recognizable images and patterns. So if we think about archetypal imagery, mother is an archetype, so I am both a mother, I have a mother, and there's an archetypal great mother, the jester, the warrior, the sage. But all of these also had symbols connected to them. And Marion, who often joins us live, sent me the most amazing YouTube uh, version of a, a TED talk by Genevieve von Petzinger about 32 symbols that she discovered in <coughs> caves and some open sites across Europe that originate 30 to 40,000 years ago during the Ice Age. And she talks about these symbols as the first language of graphic communication. And graphic communication is probably the most recognizable form of symbols today. For example, I have chosen as my symbol of the year the arrow. And that arrow is a recognizable symbol for pointing people in a direction. We see them so often, we don't think twice about it. Sometimes we see those, you know, I live in the mountains now, right? And you see those really windy signs, you know, reminding you that there's curves ahead and going up the canyon to my mom. Some of those arrows actually look kind of crazy like this, but arrows are a universal recognizable symbol. We also talked about, and I don't remember where I put that, uh, the symbol yesterday of the lotus, which is a symbol from ancient Egypt and Jewish traditions and Buddhist traditions. A lot of significance there. It's been around for a really, really long time. We also talked about the Hamsa, another ancient symbol that symbolizes protection. And I love that this one includes also the symbol of the all-seeing eye. And where I wanted to go today for our final day talking about symbols, and next week I'm going to be talking about and painting animals, which is probably one of my most favorite things to do. And I just realized I was so busy yesterday, I didn't even wash out my paint brushes, which is generally a no-no in my house. I do not like to leave paint brushes sitting in the water. Um, never seems to hurt the bristles, but it definitely is not great usually on these wood handles. So um, gentle note to self, Manette, to remember to bring down fresh water and to um, clean my brushes at the end of the day. But today I wanted to look at the symbol of the cross. And the cross has been used in so many different ways, different traditions. This is an image of a Celtic cross, which is over 15,000 years old and has a lot of different symbolism and meaning. And I'll tell you a little bit about what it means to me, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim this and get a sense of how this is gonna fit on my page. Buenos días, Blanca. Siempre me gusta verte aquí conmigo. Did you know I spoke Spanish?
And I just printed this off of the internet to use as a guide here this morning. And I'm going to go back to my phone where I was looking. And again, I cannot highly recommend enough. The a fascinating is a 12 minute te TED talk called something like 32 symbols um, appearing across Europe by Genevieve von Petzinger, who is a paleoanthropologist and cave researcher who spent over 300 hours in crawling around caves with her husband all over Europe and and um, cataloging symbols. She said a lot of work has been done around cataloging the animals and the human images. You know, we often see horse and antlered animals that look like deer. We often see the symbol of the hand in the cave paintings as well. But she got really curious and interested in the graphic symbols and what they re represented because they predate any known form of language and she doesn't see them as being part of a language necessarily but um they were definitely a form of communication and her lifelong work is to interpret maybe what some of those meant which is fascinating so the the celtic cross is over 15,000 years old in its first original patterns the cross is one of the most universal and recognizable symbols across cultures it's probably best recognized for its Christian symbolism or the Egyptian Ankh, which symbolized life. So there's many variations and forms of crosses across time and across culture. I picked the, the cult, Celtic cross really because of my own <clears throat> Celtic origins. I've always felt very connected to my Irish roots. My last name is Irish. My grandfather was first generation. Um, is that right? Second generation, his parents came over. Second generation on this continent. They went to Canada first and then relocated to southern Louisiana and ultimately ended up in Texas, which is where I was born. And I've always felt a strong kinship with Celtic mythology, Celtic lore, Celtic symbolism and the Celtic cross and, and the artwork, the Celtic knots, like so drawn to the rich history of that area. And I think I was sharing yesterday about how much I love all things fantasy fiction. And there's so much about fairies and druids and magic and the origins of Merlin and King Arthur stories and the mist of Avalon. So it felt like the Celtic cross was an appropriate symbol to bring to our creative process and practice today. And I found a nice little just snippet on here on a website actually about jewelry. Some jewelry websites often have great summaries of symbolism, but they say that in summary, the Celtic cross represents the human desire to discover and experience the mystery of life. It also symbolizes a compass guiding us through our spiritual journey. And one of the things that I have been working on over the past year and definitely going into 2023 is deepening my own spiritual practices and connection to spirit, God, universe, whatever it is, the word that you call it, but my own personal form of spiritual practice. And so I love that the Celtic cross sort of crosses over traditions of the the Celts and then was even more popularized by St. Patrick and it almost feels like a melding of cultural traditions ancient and then more contemporary Christian I was raised Catholic and so the cross has always been you know an important part of that iconic symbolism of my life and upbringing as well so we're going to have some fun drawing our own Celtic cross today. And I love that it symbolizes the four direction. And we can talk also about the Native American medicine wheel, which is the same idea of the circle representing the, the four directions. So there's so much deepening and understanding here that we could really focus on as we create. And I haven't done any journaling yet about this, but I feel like perhaps on this page that I might do some journaling or even print out some of the symbolism so 
I have some of that symbol, the, the words also captured here, but today I want to play with the image of the cross. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee while it's still hot and get diving into the creative. That was a, a lot of talking without a lot of creating yet. And I showed you guys this trick the other day, but this is one of my favorite ways for getting shapes down on paper, just creating my own graphite paper, just using a regular old number two pencil. You might remember having done this in elementary school. It's a fast way to get the shape down. It's a little bit of a cheat. If I were going to draw the Celtic cross, I would want to be pulling out my rulers and some kind of circle shape. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. I have another call I have to be on in about an hour. And I'm like, how can I make this simple? How can I capture this symbol? Have some fun, make some time for art. So sometimes when you're thinking, oh, I don't have time, it takes too long, I don't know where to get started, I recommend finding some images, images of animal, people, symbols like I've been doing, print them out online, trace them onto a page just like I have done just now, and then add some color or some Zentangle patterns. Art doesn't have to be complicated and take long periods of time. I feel incredibly grateful to the abundant amount of time that I get to make art because it's what I do for a living. All of my programs involve some kind of creative work. And so I spend a lot of time in my studio, plus because I'm such an early riser, I often get a couple of hours down here on my own in the studio in the mornings, even before I start these calls with you guys. That was not true today. I slept in today, we were up early. My daughter left for the airport this morning. My sweet husband got up and drove her to the airport at 4 a.m. so I got up to say goodbye and thankfully went back to sleep but slept a little bit longer than I might normally. Sad to, to see my daughter go and um, not sad as well, right? It's always that mixed blessing of um, being a parent of older children, incredibly grateful for the time and then happy to have our, our house and our schedule back an interesting time in my life. Celtic knots are so interesting and intricate. I love that this particular Celtic knot is actually quite simple. It's not a super complicated pattern. If you look at some of the images online of the Celtic cross that are carved out of stone with these beautiful, intricate patterns. It kind of just blows me away. My brother and his family went to Ireland this summer, saw some of the places where our family had lived in the, I think the church maybe where my grand, great-grandfather was Great great grandfather was baptized, but just some, it was really cool. It made me, it's on my bucket list definitely, is to visit Ireland. So I'm just picking that up to see what spots I have missed. Double checking. Not trying to get these perfect, perfect, but trying to get all of those lines on there. So definitely looking forward to visiting Ireland at some point in the future. All right, 
simple way then to just get this Celtic cross onto the page. Is that a little bit easier to see? No, I think it's better a little bit brighter. So welcome if you're just joining me. I'm Dr. Manette Riordan and this is Painting in Your PJs with Manette and today we are finishing up, up our week of talking about symbols with this, the symbol of the Celtic cross. And I'm thinking about how it symbolizes a compass, how it symbolizes spiritual direction, symbolizes unity and connectedness, all things that I want more of in my own life. And I haven't decided what I wanna do with the background. So I'm gonna start by just outlining my cross. I'm using a black permapake pen. I love these permapake pens for visual journaling, for mark making. They are permanent. They're really creamy. They're even just a little bit shiny. And I'm just coming in and I want to get the edges of this down so then I can come in and add some color in the background. I've been having so much fun this week with my Posca markers, adding lots of lines and dots and doodles to the different symbols. And one of the things that I love to do as an artist is to create my own dictionary of visual language, to create my own dictionary of visual language. So that might be pages where I'm drawing different types of symbols. It might be pages where I've glued in images from magazines that speak to me, images of people or animals where I'm playing with swatches of color, where I'm playing with swatches of color. Right, losing track of my lines here. So this one goes down this way. Man, those Celtic knots are tricky. Even when I've traced most of the outlines, clearly I forgot a couple of lines on there. So start to think about symbols that you're drawn to that appear over and over again in your own art. Find a journal and create your own dictionary of symbols, colors, and images. This is how we begin to craft our own unique voice as artists how we learn to see the meaning in our own artwork. There's some really amazing books on the dictionaries that have been created of symbolism that are great reference tools, nice to have on hand when you're looking for new symbols and marks. a lot when I made sure that I had drawn all of the lines. When 
I think of Ireland, I always think of how green it is. So I'm feeling that um, maybe I'm going to bring those greens into the cross this morning. And if I'm doing that, I think about, well, what do I want happening in the background? Part of me was thinking that I wanted it to maybe be a landscape in the, in the background. And what might that look like? And part of me is like, I could just keep the cross on here as it is and keep it really simple. What if I just let, gave myself permission to have the, the background just be white, that it doesn't need to have a lot of other things going on, or I can see myself adding words um, around the, the edges of the cross. And this one doesn't have a, a base on it, but many of the Celtic crosses traditionally did have a sort of block on the bottom that was the foundational pillar on which they were built. So I'm almost feeling like I want this to be just a little more grounded on my page here. So maybe I'm gonna come in and just add that on here. It also gives me a place to just add in all right so I definitely am feeling like I want to add some color to the background of this and if my cross is going to be green it might be fun to come in with some purple which they're a little bit opposite on the color wheel, not directly opposite, but I always really love purple and green together. So let's get some color down on the background. You know, this is a, a fun project that you could do with markers, with colored pencils. I'm working with acrylic paint, but when you're working with symbols like this, I often do them with pen and ink or add color just with colored pencils. Keep things quick and easy. That's why I love my mandala practice, my sacred circle practice of drawing and coloring sacred circle designs. It's calming, it's relaxing, it's not messy. I can do it on the couch in my living room. So this book was put together with canvas, sticky back canvas tape, which I really loved. And the paint goes on this surface differently than it does here, which is interesting. So I don't necessarily love that, that difference. And so I might just take a couple of coats of paint to get the look I'm going for. But also I have to remember that this journal is not about perfection, but really just about creating a, a dictionary of archetypal symbols, patterns. Next week I'm gonna be talking about animal symbolism. I love that Marion sent me the, the video where she showed some of the, in the video, she talks a little bit about and showed a few beautiful pictures from different caves in Europe of some of the animal symbolism. And horse is definitely one that shows up across time and culture. So we'll be looking at horse. We'll probably look at owl, one of my favorite animal symbols as well. Deer is one that often shows up for me, and again, it's another one that often shows up in these uh, different cave paintings. Taking my time, getting some color around here, not being 
just like yesterday with our lotus I'm not being too precious around the edges I can come back in with a, a smaller brush and I may have to touch up my black again the paint is drying very fast so just going back over it again I really love a background that's very turn that off too glary that's very flat and shiny I don't necessarily want to see the the paintbrush stroke so sometimes it just takes a few layers to get that especially painting on this journal is made of recycled manila folders so it's a, a different surface even with the gesso on it the paint goes on a little bit differently than it would if I were just working on paper or canvas it's another fun thing to play with in your own dictionary is different types of paper even just cutting out little squares of different types of paper and taking the the same pen or brush and making marks on different types of paper to see what kind of paper do you like working on how does paint take water like what are the the different surfaces that you like working on all right so we have a nice purple background and I'm thinking I'm gonna come in with a nice I'm thinking here let's see let's try this phthalo green shade and see what we think and so one of the things that I will do when even if I start off intuitively and I'm not sure where to go or what color to use. It's a really valuable lesson to swatch your colors, to swatch your colors. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this purple down over here. I love putting the swatch right here on the page beside where I'm working. Even if this page gets covered over later, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that I want to be able to see the colors side by side in the moment. And this particular purple, really close to a lavender, is a more reddish purple. And I picked a green that's a little bluey. So not sure, so let's pick a couple of different greens for a second and just swatch those out and see which green says, yes, that's the one that I'm gonna like with the purple. I also mm, don't like that one, too yellow. That's also the phthalo green. Mm, how about this chromium oxide green? This is a nice green. I also want to be able to see the lines. I want it to be slightly transparent. I'm going to, you know, add more over the, the marks. That one's almost just a little too, too dark. So it's almost like something in between these two. But that one's pretty close. All right. What is this one? This is a, an old Jelly Arts one. I don't even know if this one's still alive. We'll see. And I think this is that in-between color. So I think I'm going to actually mix these two together, right? So don't be afraid to mix your colors. And I'm just going to do that right on this page right here so you can see what I'm doing. Normally I would do that on my palette that's probably way more green than I need. But I will scoop that off and use it on another page or else I will just cover this whole page and when you're mixing colors together don't do what I did I started with the dark and you always want to start with the light and add just a touch of that dark at a time because the dark really takes over right that dark really takes over all right that's feeling pretty good 
And so I had one that was a little more opaque, one a little more transparent. I can still see those lines underneath. I will bring the lines back again. This is often how I work with the layers. I needed to be able to see those lines underneath. I've got some texture on the page here from my gesso, having gessoed the folders before I made the book. On my email list, I will be sending out the first email today about my new mythical makeover experience. It's coming in a couple of weeks where we're going to take the story of the, the secret garden and really dive deep into some creative play, looking at the archetypal symbols, the archetypal caricatures, myths, and themes and create our own secret garden for the year ahead. And we're gonna create a really simple unfolding journal. And I have to finish the, the sales page today and a few other things before it's quite ready to send out. But I'm super excited about the program, um, excited about the, the beautiful little graphic that my son Connor, who does a lot of my design and back end support work. And if you've never read or heard of the, the classic novel, The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett, she also wrote The Little Princess, which was a very popular. And I'm curious if you're watching live, what the, your relationship is with the symbol of the cross. Is it something you think about something you revere, something you reject or resist. To me, when I look at this, it also represents crosses represented crossroads. This one again is that sense of representing the, the compass. My husband and I were in Santa Fe over Thanksgiving and they have a beautiful church, old church, with so much iconic symbolism and art from the Catholic tradition. Just adding a little bit of that darker green to create some distinctions here. It's an interesting color combo. I don't know that now that I have all these greens down here, it's my favorite color combo. I'm going to take my nice catalyst wedge, move my phone so I don't get more paint on my phone, and I'm just going to take that paint. Spread it out on this page, and then I already have the beginnings of a page created here, the beginnings of a page created some interesting shapes and a little bit of color peeking through. It's all good. It's a great way to use up leftover paint on your palette is to just put it on another page in your journal so you already have something to respond to when you come to that page. So maybe this will be an Irish landscape or something. Who knows what might show up on that page. All right, I am gonna mute myself 
and get this nice and dry before I go on to the next step. Actually, I may try and paint over before I do that. I had a couple of drips of my green and my purple here. Just fade those out a little bit and then I'll come back over them with my lavender because otherwise they're gonna bug me right so notice when things are bugging you everything's paint overable everything's fixable nothing especially working with acrylic paints nothing's permanent nothing is permanent and I still have a little bit of green in this brush. This is a funny little brush specific for working with acrylics and the bristles tend to hold a lot of paint. You can see I'm getting a little bit of that green mixed in. We'll just do that in a few different places. I'm probably gonna come back over all of this again with another layer of this lavender to darken that up and smooth it out even a little bit more or maybe I'll just end up drawing patterns all over the whole page who knows okay let me get this dry Blanca, I feel exactly the same way that pretty much once I went off to college, I started to seek more information and knowledge, explored other faiths and traditions, have a very personal, non-religious spiritual practice. And so looking at symbols that were so much a part of childhood and how we ra were raised, it can bring up a lot of feelings, curiosity, emotions, for sure. And when you look at the ancient history of the Celtic cross, it was very cultural in intention, and they had a very different form of spirituality. It became sort of co-opted or adapted by the Catholic Church, which they were very good at going into cultures and sort of co-opting things that were already in existence and, and using them. Like I love stories of the, I'm missing a line here, of the goddess. I'm not in that design, it doesn't have one, but I really want that circle to continue there. Um, the Celtic goddess Brigid became Saint Brigid. So it's interesting to just think about culturally how things were almost recycled, right? How they were recycled. So I'm just going to start come in like I've done the last few days with my Posca markers, add a little more detail I'm probably going to want to bring back these black lines so that black really stands out And I find it fascinating that symbols like the cross, it is so interesting to see, it's exactly what I was gonna say, culturally how things 
weave together. So um, page is still wet. And when we look at how the cross really is one of those universal symbols that has appeared across time, across history, culture, across religion. And that what we sometimes think a symbol means on the surface often has a deeper, deeper or richer or more diverse meaning than we give it credit for. Again, just going over this and you can see what a difference it makes to bring those lines back again. And if I had not, let's see, where have I gotten lost here? Right there, there we go. If I had not blackened them first, if I had left them just with the pencil marks, I wouldn't have been able to see them underneath. So it takes a little patience to do these more layered processes. But in the end, I always am so happy with the results. Noticing that this one isn't quite lining up, but that's okay. And I've always been fascinated by cultural religious art as well. Looking at the sort of iconic paintings of Russia, right? Looking at so many different ways that faith and spirituality has been visually communicated and represented throughout the ages. And having grown up in San Antonio, Texas, where the majority of the population is Hispanic, Texas was originally part of Mexico. So there's, you know, deep history and culture of both indigenous populations and Mexican culture and tradition. So lots of images of the Virgin Mary and some of the art is just beautiful. And when we can step away from any stories or you know, beliefs or doubts or whatever that we have or judgments about other faiths and traditions that aren't our own and just appreciate the beauty of the art itself and how people were inspired to create and connect to so many of the archetypal images of their faith. And when we look at Mother Mary's a great example, look at her as an archetypal symbol of mother and unconditional love, it can change our relationship with some of those traditional symbols or archetypes from cultures that either We've left traditions or we have been raised in different traditions, but there's something to learn by just looking at how people use art, as the woman said in the YouTube video, to graphically communicate meaning, reverence, history, Long before there were words and written language, we communicated in images, even as children, right? We were 
able to recognize shapes long before we had words, right? And so just recognizing our own connection to visual imagery and symbolism is a great personal exploration. So now I'm just going to have some fun with my Posca markers continue to add a little bit of color. I may not finish this one today. Can't believe it's been almost uh, almost an hour already. And I brought along a white gel pen to just uh, maybe see, show you how if you don't have paint markers, this one I think is just about out of ink, so maybe that wasn't a great grab. But gel pens also work great over acrylic paint. And so, okay, that one's missing a line. These little Celtic knots are sneaky. Um, if you don't have Posca markers or have the colors that you want. The, the Sakura Jelly Roll pens are wonderful. I particularly like the, the thickest nib, the size 10. And I love their super bright neon colors. And that's not working like I want it to, so I'm going to go back to my super fine tip white Posca marker, but colorful gel pens are great. So all week long we have been exploring symbols. I started off the week with the arrow talking about how and why I choose a symbol of the year to guide me. So if you have picked a word or phrase or theme of the year, it's fun to take that one step further and consider what would be a symbol that would allow you to really remember to integrate that word even more deeply into your daily life. It's always fun to come up with a word of the year and then wonder, well, what do you do with it? So I think if we continue to find artful, creative ways to connect to the meaning that we want to experience, cultivate, create the changes that we want to see in our lives. Symbolism is a really powerful way to do that. So again, just coming in here as I always do with just a few little bits of decoration, just adding this white really brightens things up. Not feeling like I want to add a lot of color to this one, kind of similar to the Lotus yesterday with the elegance and simplicity here. There doesn't need to be a lot of clutter on this one. And I'm seeing in my mind's eye the, the stone carvings of these crosses that were so intricate but monochromatic, right? They were carved out of stone. They were stone colored. So you got the shape and the texture. So just sort of honoring that idea of creating something monochromatic, meaning it's all one color. 
it's shades of one color. Again, just feeling like it doesn't it doesn't need a lot. And adding the white just helps it, the white and the black help it pop off the page. And my trick and my cheat today was to print a Celtic cross off the internet to color the back of that over with graphite and to trace that onto my paper first. Could I have drawn this myself? 100%. But sometimes I need things to just be quick and easy. And I want to get to the fun, which is the, the painting. I don't want to spend that extra hour drawing, so finding some simple ways that we can get things going faster so that we have more time spent playing and less agonizing over our ability to draw. And this one is not quite finished, but I have another call to go hop on this morning. So I am going to think about where I'm going to go with this. Definitely feeling like I want to add some writing to the background here. Not quite sure what that is going to look like, but I will share over on my Instagram at Dr. Minette Riordan what the finished page looks like once I get there, but it's a great start. It's a great start. I spent a lot of time talking about symbolism and the wonderful TED talk that I watched this morning. And I'm in no rush, right? I'm in no rush. These videos are not about me necessarily showing you a start to finish project, but to just providing some inspiration, creating conversation, talking about things that matter and how to create both beauty and meaning in our art. So as always, thank you for joining me live. Thank you for watching the replay. Drop me a note in the comments if you watch the replay and let me know that you stopped by. I will be back next Monday where we're going to be playing with animal symbolism and why I'm so passionate about it and using some of these same techniques we use this way to explore uh, four different animals. So I will be back bright and early Monday morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Time. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And as always, thanks for watching. This is Dr. Minette Riordan, and this is Painting in Your PJs with Minette.